Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. Warning. Ezra Levant here. How you doing? It is uh, Friday at 12 noon Eastern time. Two hours ago, the Federal Court of Canada uh, released an appalling ruling. And do you have a copy of that? Um, we're going to go through it a little bit. I should tell you that Rebel News and our former reporter, Kian Bexty, sued the government of Canada, challenging the legality, challenging the constitutionality of Justin Trudeau's airport COVID jails. Um, I don't think that they're officially called jails, they're called quarantine facilities or something, but when it's a government order that requires you to stay in a locked facility, I mean, it's not, it's, I mean, there, you could walk out, I suppose, but you, then you get a massive ticket. When you're losing your liberty for three days, and by the way, you have to spend thousands of dollars for it, when you're required to do this, that's a jail. That's a jail. In fact, most people who are jailed are not actually even jailed for three days. Most people, they go to jail, then they get out on bail, and then there's some hearing later. And as you know, for the vast majority of offenses in Canada, there's no, there's no jail time. So we went to the Federal Court of Canada and applied uh, to have this law declared unconstitutional because it violates various rights of Canadian citizens. And we were in court the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms, they were in court too, and a couple of private citizens. I think there was some marijuana grow up boss who didn't like the fact that he was ordered into these jails, so he sued. He's got some money, obviously. And that's it. Um, can you go to the Federal Court of Canada website? That might be a better way to, to find it, but if you've got the PDF version, that, that'll... Okay. Um, we said it's a violation of all sorts of things. Uh, it's basically false imprisonment. You, you give up your freedom of mobility. There's no due process. Like it, it really violates so many different uh, sections in our Charter of Rights. And um, the first point I'd like to make is how disappointing, and disappointing isn't even the right word, how, I mean, the word betrayal comes to mind instead. The, cosmic disappointment that there was no one from the establishment there fighting for these same freedoms alongside us. There was no Civil Liberties Association like that Canadian Civil Liberties Association. There's a bunch of those. There's the BC Civil Liberties Association. There's the Rocky Mountain Civil Liberties Association. There's all these liberal groups that always claim to care about civil liberties. They were not in court. Are, are, they, are they busy? Is there something more important than this pandemic lockdown and all of its rights that's frozen? Uh, there were no law professors. There were no pro bono lawyers. There were no other than our lawyer and the JCCF lawyer and that, and that marijuana guy. There was no one from the tourism industry. You would think someone from the airline industry, from the travel industry, would say, you know what, I'm losing my entire business. I'm losing my entire industry. Everything we do has been killed. By the way, the rest of the world is going back to normal, and we are getting harsher here in Canada. Maybe I'll send a lawyer. I mean, the lawyer will cost me 100 grand, but I'm losing 100 grand a day. If I'm Air Canada, I'm losing 100 grand an hour. I'm losing 100 grand an hour, Air Canada, seriously. That would only be two and a half million dollars a day. They've lost more than that. WestJet, Flair, if they didn't want to um, be the one named, they could have the Airline Industry Association, whatever it's called, the Travel Agents Industry Association. I don't know, how many travel agents are there in Canada? 10,000? Probably more. Maybe they'd each chip in a tenor and, and hire a lawyer. Uh, maybe the some federation of business, some chamber of commerce might be there. Oh, I don't know. No? I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe a political party would be there. Maybe, uh, uh, you know, in the United States, there are Democrat lawyers and Republican lawyers, and they do a lot of battle in court. They don't just battle in Parliament, they battle in court too. 
maybe you would have a federal or a provincial or some, uh, and they don't even have to be conservative. How about just someone who doesn't believe in false imprisonment without a trial, with you know, putting, and, let me, and this is one of the things I learned about this case. Obviously, if you're healthy, you go to this quarantine jail. But if you come off the plane and go, <laughs> I got the Rona, they send you straight home. You don't have to go to the jail. The sick people are sent away. The healthy people are sent to the COVID jails. That's a fact. I was very disappointed to see this news today. The news came out, and it's a 100-plus uh, uh, page decision. And I skipped right to the end. Um, in fact, I'd, yeah, there's a decision there. So just go slow for a second. Let's just go through the front page just to show people for a second what we're talking about here. So as you can see, it's in the federal court, the Chief Justice, Paul Crampton. So here's a group of uh, people who I think uh, who sued their sort of individual plaintiffs there. Okay, and, and then scroll down a little bit more. A little, little bit more, more. And then you can see, I think that's the marijuana guy. And then there's Rebel News and our former reporter, Kian Bexty. And scroll down a little more. And that's it. So the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms uh, represented a bunch of these folks. Um, and uh, so they were there, and good on them. But that's it. Now you can see it's a very long. It's a very long ruling. How many pages in this whole thing? 137. I'm not going to uh, read the whole thing. But I want to go straight to the end. Can you go right to the very end? Um, it's it's 100, 130 plus pages. And he it, a lot of it's technical, but there's this one paragraph near the end where under conclusions. And he, so he goes through the, uh, let me just uh, take you out of suspense. He throws it out. He throws the case out. He said, yeah, sure, it's an inconvenience. But it's not a major violation of your liberties to be jailed for three days. Um, can you can type in the word conclusion? Just like you know how to search it? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, further down, it's like really right near the very end. Just keep word searching. Yeah, keep going. Are there no more? It's like, it's like the very end, very end. Okay, scroll down more. Is there, that's the last page? Okay. Okay, go up a little bit. Yeah, here we go. So this, paragraph 311. I recognize, okay, um, he's talking about people who have good reasons to travel. I recognize that those who have second residences abroad or other good reasons to travel may not welcome such measures, particularly if they were required to pay for some of them. However, like times of war and other crises, pandemics call for sacrifices to save lives and avoid broad-based suffering. If we are willing to make such, if we are unwilling to make such sacrifices, and engage in behavior that poses a demonstrated risk to the health and safety of others, the principles of fundamental justice will not prevent the state from performing its essential function of protecting its citizens from that risk. So um, there's a lot in there, isn't it? So he's, he's talking about folks with second residences abroad. So he's saying, oh, you rich folks, you're rich like me, I'm, I'm going to disparage you as rich. So you're rich, yeah, you rich folks with second homes abroad, you may not like this. Well, how about, it's, it's actually the opposite, isn't it? If you are a wealthy person with a home abroad, odds are you can just skip the quarantines and pay the massive fine. It's actually the opposite. It's actually poor people for whom the fine is devastating. <laughs> not, not people who have a, you know, this isn't Bill Morneau and his villa in the south of France that he, quote, forgot about. But look at this. Like times of war. Is it like a time of war? Is it really? 
and other crises. Pandemics call for sacrifices. Hey, I got a question for you, Chief Justice of the Federal Court of Canada. What's his salary, Chief Justice, Federal Court of Canada? Um, I'm just, I'm just, what do you think his salary is, Justin? 350? I think that's an excellent guess, but it's low. Um, okay, the Supreme Court is 403,000. Um, I'd have to go for the uh, federal court. It's probably slightly lower. And then they get massive pensions. So, yeah. Um, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court gets 400 grand a year. There it is. The Chief Justice of the Federal Court, $344,400. Boy, you were so close. You were within uh, like uh, 2%. It's an excellent guess. You do well on prices right, but you were just over. 350 grand a year plus expenses. And he'll get a quarter million dollar year pension when he's done. Hey, um, Paul Crampton, 350 grand a year federal court judge. I'm certain he has a driver. I'm certain he has endless expenses. Uh, and I don't know if he's left Canada in the last year. I'm guessing he has. Uh, judges are, uh, I like to take vacations. Um, he's had a, an easy workload because so many courts just shut down for a lot of the pandemic. I wonder what sacrifices this 350 grand a year federal court judge has made during the pandemic. I, I think he'd have a tough time uh, finding a list other than my favorite restaurant was closed. I'm not sure if, he, if anyone in the government class has made a sacrifice. Can you put that, that page back up there? Because I, I just want to refresh my memory about the words he said. Um, so, uh, you know, it's like a time of war. We really have to make sacrifices to save lives and avoid broad-based suffering. Well, is it a fact that going to these COVID hotels when you're healthy has saved lives? And the answer is the government has no such fact. They, they haven't tracked it. They haven't accumulated any such evidence. They're just doing this. They have no fact that it's safer. In fact, how could it be safer than just going home? Our former reporter, Kean, um, had his car at the airport. He could have just taken the car and gone home, had interaction with literally nobody, but instead he went through this COVID hotel. He had close interactions with 14 people. He counted. How does that make sense? Can you put that up there? I just want to finish out the quote there, and, and uh, I'll have a longer video later, but I'm uh, just this last part here. The principles of fundamental justice will not prevent the state from performing its essential function of protecting its citizens from that risk. Well, no one can argue with that broad-based principle, but to say that this COVID jail achieves that, that's not even something I think the government would claim. Thanks very much. But let me get back to the point I made earlier about the fact that it was just us and the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms in there. There were no other civil liberties groups. There was no industry groups. Like you would think, like, like seriously, maybe an, a flight attendants union, right? I mean, how many flight attendants have lost their jobs in the last year? I don't, is it 10,000? I, I just literally don't know. Um, is it not in the interest of um, flight attendants to maybe get flying going again? You got 10,000 flight attendants in your union, maybe each one chips in a tenor, and you hire a lawyer. Travel agents, hospitality industry, the convention industry. You know, there's a very, very large convention industry, and it doesn't just serve the domestic audience. Um, I know, for example, <clears throat> partly because of its proximity to the U.S., um, cities like Toronto, uh, before the lockdown, had lots of American conferences because our dollar's weak. I remember going to a meeting of the American Association of Petroleum Landmen, some of the best people in the world you'll ever meet. You know, I went to the conference in Montreal. You're, you're from Texas, you're from Oklahoma, and you're going to fly somewhere for a conference anyways. Why not go to Montreal? It's fun, it's a little bit exotic, you get a little bit of that French feeling, but you don't have to cross the ocean. You just come to Montreal. Um, how much business do Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal do from Americans? 
coming up because of our low dollar. I think it's enormous. You'd think those convention centers and the convention industry would say, yeah, maybe we should get back to life uh, considering Americans have. Let, maybe we'll chip in for a while. No one was there. And I'm complaining a little bit, but, but I'm actually explaining. I'm saying, if a year and a half into this, and the opposition parties don't oppose, the civil liberties groups don't litigate, the law professors don't write those angry letters they used to do against Stephen Harper every week, if the industry groups are timid and meek, if the media is completely supportive and they love this lockdown, they want it forever, why should the chief judge, Peter Crampton, why should he take it on the chin? Why should he be the one to stink up the joint? Who invited the skunk to the party? And that's the thing. You think if, if Judge Crampton throws out this illegal law, he's going to be invited to the cool kids? You know, he's going to get his Christmas card, the Christmas invitations again this year? You want to be the one guy in society, the fanciest of the fancy pants? Like, seriously, Chief Justice of the Federal Court of Appeal. Federal Court, rather. You think he wants to be the one guy who says, uh, I care about freedom? Now, he's not the one guy. He'd be with millions of Canadians. But um, if no other part of the establishment, we talked about this other day, how it's like a net. And a net is like ropes that have knots or strings that have knots. And any one knot can break, but the net holds. You can still catch a fish uh, or catch a unicorn or whatever you're hunting. So in our, in our democratic civil liberties liberal society, you have all these institutions I talked about, the government, the opposition, the, the courts, the media, the civil society, the, all these things, the, the academia. If any one of them is missing in action, your net still works. You can still catch the tiger. But if they all fail? So basically we're asking this chief judge to be the one knot that holds. Yeah, we are asking him, and he failed. Um, we're appealing. Is, is there anything on nocovidjails.com? Is that site being updated? So we have a, a website called nocovidjails.com. And what does it look like right now? That's where, we, that's where we crowdfunded to hire two great lawyers, Robert Hawks and Breaking, court rejects our charter challenge. So we're appealing, need you help? Let's click on that. Let's read that quick story there. Um, full reports on how we're fighting back will be up shortly. Uh, no COVID jails. Videos from Adam, Ezra, Adam Sosa, and our lawyer, Sarah Miller. We plan to appeal and need your help. You can read the full opinion for yourself, which ends. Yeah, and, then that's a, and you can see it right there. So you can get that on nocovidjails.com. And we do need help. We spent about 100 grand on this so far. And we're going to appeal. The appeal will not be as expensive as the original lawsuit. Because the reason you say, how do you spend 100 grand? Because we had to cross-examine all the government witnesses, all their bureaucrats, all their health experts. That took two weeks. Um, so yeah, we're fighting. And yeah, I'm mad about that, but I'm, but I'm actually not that surprised. I'm actually not that surprised. Um, it would be surprising if a man of the establishment was the one who stood up and said no to the establishment. And he must have looked around his courtroom and said, who are these stragglers? JCCF, never heard of you. Rebel News, oh, you, those, you're those guys. Huh. This is who I got, this rap and some marijuana guy? This is all you got? Country of 38 million people? This is all you got? This is who's here? So where's my, where's my Civil Liberties Association? Nobody? 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 Where's um, the fancy dean of law from the University of Toronto or from McGill or from Queens or UBC? Or where, where are these amazing legal scholars? Where's retired judges, retired cabinet ministers. Where's uh, Anne McClellan? Where's Jody Wilson-Raybould? Where are the, um, the alumni, the emeritus? Where's the senior voices? Nobody? It's just this rabble? And you want me, chief judge of the 
federal court to say no to all the health experts? Wow, come on, you think that's going to happen? Yeah, we had to try, though. Give us that, we have to try. And, we, and you know us, you know us, we never stop fighting. So this morning, um, I did instruct our law firm to appeal. And you may think that's doomed. I think it's an uphill battle, but that's what we're built for. We're not, we're not the easy path. The easy path is what the cowards in the media party do, the government journalists and the government lawyers and the government civil liberties groups. That's the easy path. If you want easy, hang out with them. But if you want to help us, go to nocovidjails.com. I think we're going to need 50 grand for the appeal. We spent, we've, I literally um, got the invoice for their final work on this last week. And I think it totals almost exactly 100 grand. We got one bill for 30-ish and we got another bill for almost 70. And they, they worked, they did great work. But it comes down to the temperament of the judge and his, how he feels that day and his social, uh, this is a very political uh, case. I'm gonna read some super chat. Super you, Annalisa, when are the Menzies merch coming out? Need me some Menzie. You don't hear that a lot. And I keep thinking, is that David just writing under a pen name? But, but Justin reminds me, David would not know how to do that. So uh, that's how you know it's not David catfishing, because David doesn't even know how to do that. <laughs> so that is real. And uh, what do the French say? Chacun a son goût. Everyone, look, there's a reason why Baskin Robbins has 31 flavors. You know, not everyone likes uh, vanilla. There are some unusual flavors of ice cream, and is any one of them morally superior than the other? No. I'm pretty predictable. I like the mint chocolate chip. I'm kidding around. Listen, our friend David is great. He, uh, you know, he's a Rebbe Award winner. I don't know if I told you that the other day for pandemic journalism. Uh, on Rumble, shared, shared, pardon me, what's that? Oh, we do. Okay. Okay, so I'm just hearing in my ear that we have a mock-up, like a draft, a tease. Oh, okay, well, let's take a look. So this is, holy cow. I had no idea. You know, we've got a little gym in the back of the office here. We put it in during the pandemic, just, uh, and actually David is the number one user of the gym. I had no idea he had been so diligent. Show that one more time. That is for the ladies, for the non-binary folks out there, for the bi-curious, that is for people who, you know, I mean, you wear that. Yeah, it reminds me of this very old movie with Gerard Depardieu and uh, called Roxanne, you know, with Cyrano de Bergerac. And you know the story, I mean, in, in Roxanne, uh, the French actor, um, Gerard Depardieu, he had, he had a very big nose. Do you know that story? Can you, can you throw on the trailer on Roxanne? And, uh, and Daryl Hannah was the beautiful woman. It's a, great, it's a great archetypical story. It's been redone so many times. Cyrano de Bergerac. Um, this was the Hollywood version. So they had the French actor Gerard Depardieu, who's never been particularly good looking, but he had a certain charisma to him and very, very French. I'd say he's the greatest French actor. And um, you know what, I'm mixing up my, I'm mixing up my uh, movies, aren't I? Because that's Steve Martin. And Daryl Hannah, you know. And so, sorry, I was confusing Cyrano de Bergerac. And, uh, but, but, so he's got this big nose, right? And he, uh, he goes to the doctor and says, what can you do about my nose? I got this nose, and he really likes the girl, but he's got that nose, and he says to the doctor, cut it off! Just cut it off! And he's got that nose. 
And, he, and everyone likes him, but he just really loves that girl. Thanks. Um, there's this very funny scene is that he goes into a makeup store, a women's makeup store. And he says to the young lady who really wants to help him, he says, I would like to de-emphasize a certain facial feature. Can you help me with shading? And she really tries to de-emphasize that facial figure by distraction. It doesn't really work. Put up the David Menzies picture again. So if you are wearing this David Menzies shirt, it, distra it pulls the eye away. It pulls the eye away. You're wearing that? Let's say you, you, let's say you had an outbreak. You got a blemish. You, you got a rash. You put that on. It pulls the eye down. It pulls the eye down. And you can get lost. You can get lost in that picture. Another terrible 80s movie, Richard Dreyfus, Moon Over Parador. I want to swim in your rivers. I want to climb your mountains. All right. I apologize for the last five minutes. On Rumble, we're talking about the, um, you know what? If, I, if there was like a rewind button, I would just skip that whole thing. Just that whole Roxanne thing, that whole bi curious thing, that whole de emphasize, put the eyes elsewhere thing, which didn't connect. That one didn't land. That joke didn't land. I think that's a hell of a shirt, though. I think that's very well done, and I can hardly wait for it to be on in our store. I don't know what the holdup is, but hopefully it'll be on. I mean, why wouldn't it be up right now? Okay, let's, get, let's, let's see if we can get it up now. Okay, well, apologies for that little detour. Um, getting back to the COVID jails ruling, the sacrifices are made only by the average citizen, says Share 21. Well, exactly. Justin Trudeau got back from his parties in Europe, and he, and he was in the quarantine hotel for a few hours. <laughs> sure, because he's the boss. Hyperchat from uh, History Club World. Would Rebel News ever work with GB News on a show or something in a formal way? Follow History Club World on Instagram. Uh, I really admire GB News, and um, in fact, I think I'm, I might be their number one foreign fan. I mean, I just spend way too much time watching and following GB News, and I'm loving it because they're fighting a great battle over there. I don't think that they would um, do anything with us in a formal way. I just don't think they would. Uh, and I haven't asked, and that's not my ambition. Um, I just am a super fan. I want to learn from them, and I'm rooting for them. Um, they're very much Great Britain focused, um, and uh, no, I mean, but we, we have, I mean, for example, I saw Calvin Robinson on their show the other day talking about critical race theory. He's been a guest on our show from time to time, so we actually have some overlap, um, but uh, no, I don't think it'll be anything formal. Uh, on Rumble, MVP9337, I don't trust judges to hold up people's civil rights. Yeah, I mean, it, it, judges can be courageous or judges can be creatures of the establishment. Um, and sometimes those things go together, but most of the time they don't. YouTube, Viva Fry, this judgment was pre-drafted and released only to sanction with the go what the government's already done, given their eminent elimination of the policy. Yeah, it could be. Could be. Rumble, Max Berger, whoa, David has been working out. Yeah, he really has. Um, Justin says he thinks maybe that's, that image of David might be a Photoshop. That might not be his actual body. Justin just says he's seen his body. Where have you seen that? Should I not ask? You accidentally walked into like the gym area and he didn't have a shirt on or something? He had a tank top. Okay. All right. Some of us through your imagination. Woo! So you'll be buying a shirt. <laughs> Do you have your pronouns in your bio? That's what I want to know. <laughs> On Super U, Stephen C., when will you feature the Derek Sloan sponsored CPAC presentation with the three doctors yesterday? Is that up on our website yet? Yeah. 
So it's on our website. And in fact, uh, this morning I interviewed Derek Sloan. We'll, we'll have it on the show uh, tonight. So, uh, and we did send reporters there, although I understand we had a technical problem. Um, so, uh, okay, it's 12.30. Let's catch up on things. I have a fancy pen here. We covered the no COVID jails. We got to move on. I saw something very upsetting this morning. The Sir John A. Macdonald statue was being taken down in Kingston. That's Canada's original capital city. I think this is Joe Wilmington's footage. Is that right? So you've got like all those hooligan Antifa homeless protesters there in the tents. But that's not hooligan Antifa working worker crew, that's actual, like that is the city taking it down. Is it taking it down? Um, they took it down. Sir John A. Macdonald in Kingston, Ontario. Why don't you take out the word King from Kingston? Why don't you take out Victoria, BC? Why don't you take out both the British part and the Columbus Columbia part. Uh, why don't you take out Alberta, because that's named after a daughter of Queen Victoria, if I'm not mistaken. Um, New Brunswick, uh, that's part of Germany, clearly Nazi symbology there. Nova Scotia, nothing's more white than Scotland. Um, you know, Prince Edward Island, well, obviously a prince, so he's the you know, white privilege. Edward sounds like a sexist. Um, island will allow. Um, the St. Lawrence Seaway, Montreal. Uh, there's just pretty much every single word in this country should be um, purged. I mean, just, and don't even get me started on the anthem, which has been changed several times. God keep our land glorious and free. How long do you think that's going to be in there? There's so many things. Um, Yeah, that's a disgrace. That would be like Americans taking down statues of George Washington in their capital. Yeah, maybe they will. Um, all right. We mentioned GB News. And um, I'm going to show this on my show tonight, but GB News has under, been under a deplatforming attack. Um, even before they launched, some left-wing pressure groups were harassing potential advertisers, saying they're a, they're a hate channel, don't advertise there. How would you know they hadn't broadcast a minute yet? So it's sort of fun to watch their boss, Andrew Neal, fight back, because he's no slouch. And he has held senior positions in various newspapers and TV stations on BBC, on Sky TV, Sky News. So. Um, He's not going to roll over. And by the way, they're a very diverse group over there. They're not hateful at all. Can I play for you a five-minute clip? It's five minutes. But when I listen to Andrew Neal, five minutes goes by in 30 seconds. I always, I, I, I watch Andrew Neal for half an hour. I don't watch a lot of things for half an hour. He's so, so good. Here's his response. I'm going to show this on the show tonight. But I'd like to show you now, because I showed you on Monday, the attacks they were under. Take a look at this. Welcome back. Tonight, a Media Watch special. We ask companies boycotting GB News for peddling hate. What on earth are you talking about? Now, since GB News launched on Sunday night, our young and diverse team of reporters across the country have covered Nissan's plans to invest more in Sunderland, regeneration of Skegness, whiskey production in Hoyk, pressures on the hospitality sector in Newcastle, the pollution charge in Birmingham, house building in Brickhouse, flooding in Bedfordshire, Scotland's fan zone in Glasgow, the struggles of the wedding industry in Ipswich, COVID infection rates in Bolton, that's a hot spot, vaccinations in Abergavenny, the debate over Irish language lessons in Belfast, and of course, Wales's wonderful Euros win in Cardiff. Now, some of these stories you won't see on other news channels. All of them are important to the communities involved, and not a scintilla of hate in any of them.
We've interviewed the Chancellor of the Exchequer, reported on growing anti-Semitism in London and covered the country's many mental health problems. Again, not an iota of hate in sight. Indeed, the only hate this channel has broadcast was when we showed film of a BBC Newsnight reporter being attacked by a baying anti-lockdown mob. And we condemned that unreservedly. Yet a number of companies, some of them well-known brands, have decided to stop advertising on GB News. They've bowed to pressure from a fringe group called Stop Funding Hate, a misnomer if ever there was one. It's quite remarkable that serious, important executives in well-established companies can be so easily cowed. They've all taken the knee to stop funding hate. It's important that they, and you, realize to whom they are in thrall. SFH doesn't stand for a liberal, inclusive society. It's dominated by far-left agitators and cranks that push for advertiser boycotts of any media organization with which it disagrees. Its default position is to smear anything it takes against as a peddler of hate. In GB News's case, SFH started rounding up the lynch mob four months before we'd even started broadcasting. So I don't think we're talking open minds here. If advertisers want to see real hate, they should have a look at the social media postings of SFH supporters. They smear and threaten businesses and people who won't do their bidding with words like vile, scum, toxic, and many more words that we can't repeat here tonight. Yet through fear or ignorance, some companies do as SFH bids. Woke nonsense has reached the boardroom, and corporate capitalism is becoming the useful idiot of bigots bent on censorship. Now, I understand that in some cases it was not the bosses of the brands that pulled their ads, but their advertising agencies. Fair enough. There's still time for you to have a word with your agencies, who work for you after all, uh, and risk doing you huge harm. But all these brands should understand that this boycott business can play both ways. GB News viewers are incensed with advertisers who've taken against us for no reason. Many have written to these advertisers to tell them so. And our numbers, our viewers are growing for three nights in a row. This show has been the number one rated show in its time slot on any news channel available in the UK. And if you add our audiences, our friends, our allies, our sympathizers, together we can muster millions of supporters on social media. It's not a good idea to be on the wrong end of them. We will not go there. We have more important work to do. We want to provide a high quality news channel which reputable advertisers are proud to use and which delivers great results for them. So far, not a single example of hate has been given in evidence to justify the boycott of this channel. But this program issues a standing invitation to the bosses of any company or agency that thinks to the contrary to come on air. We'll look at your examples if you have them. We'll discuss them together. Our studio door is open because you're in the politics business now. And that's where you are when you succumb to political pressure. And then, like politicians, you have to be held to account. And that's tonight's Media Watch. I really, I really like him. First of all, I just like, I mean, I, I, I love that accent. Um, I know how smart he is, and I've seen him in verbal combat before. Uh, and look what he says there. He's like he's a man of the establishment. He's on maybe one side of the establishment, but he's not outside of it. And look what he's saying. He's saying to some of the big shot companies, he's saying, "Yeah, you want to deplatform me? Well, you better be careful. I don't deplatform you. You want to boycott me?" Two can play that game, and maybe you better hush now. Like, he's not declaring war. He's not rushing right out there and saying, I'm going to deplatform you. But he's saying, uh, you'd be wise to think twice. And I bet you're going to see some companies backpedal. Now, IKEA has boycotted them, and they're holding the line. But others have come back. There's something called Money Supermarket that's come back. And, like, there's just some advertisers who I think probably let some social media intern make the decision for them. And now the CEO is saying, what are you doing? Why are you picking a fight with Andrew Neal? I know your friends on Twitter like it, but are you nuts? Anyways, uh, that's one of the things I like 
about them is to see how they fight because we can learn from them on that. Uh, while we're on the subject of the UK, let me show you um, a UK COVID checkpoint, children getting tickets. I'm not sure if I recall this description, but let's take a look at it together. Can I ask what's going on? It's just a uh, operation for face coverings and uh, home affairs. Face coverings. So it's still mandatory, is it? Yes. Face mask, puppy nose, please. Thank you, darling. Thank you. 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 Thank because this guy has given his personal information and right. realistically I don't want you here sneakily filming it because you've been trying to catch police in doing whatever it is you think that we're doing. All right? What I will tell you is though, my colleague has seen you cycle on the footpath, all right, which is an offence. So if you're worried about what we're doing, we can deal with that offence and your GoPro can be evidence of that offence and we can seize under section 90 of the pace as evidence of you cycling on the footpath if you'd like that. Is that what you'd like us to do? Yes, no? Yes. Yeah. So this guy doesn't want you overhearing his personal details and he don't want you recording it on GoPro either. It's so in give public. Him some privacy. There's no privacy in public. Right, okay. Would you want someone to give your personal details while he's giving it to that officer? There's no privacy in public. So I'm asking you, I'm asking you, would you like someone having your home details when you're giving them to an officer for an offence? There's no privacy in public. If you want, you can take him to your car. Huh? If you want privacy, you can take him to your car. Right, so now you're telling us what to do with that They're basically checking people for face masks on the bus. Yeah, and they gave a kid uh, a ticket. Yeah. They gave a kid a ticket. Did you write him a ticket? I can't disclose that to you, mate. Did they write him a ticket? Sorry? So what is it to you? Uh, I'm just curious. So how does it concern you? Because you're writing uh, how does children. She asked you, how does it concern you? Yeah, they're writing children tickets. They're giving children tickets. I'm just recording. You're just recording? Awesome. Did you see him start on the football? Yeah. I wasn't cycling, unfortunately. That's quite unfortunate, isn't it? That's, that's good. You're not breaking the law, then, are you? That's good. Unfor unfortunate. unfortunate for you. But in the meantime, I'm just going to record that quickly. Okay. If someone's going to gonna break into to, to a car, they're nowhere to be seen. In a few hours. <laughs> You know, uh, there's a lot going on there. First of all, that cop pulling down his face mask to talk. That's just, that's just perfect, isn't it? Uh, again, it's amazing how many cops are either stupid or play stupid. Uh, you're not allowed to sneakily film me. Ah, the old rule against sneakily film me. Um, there's no such thing in Canada or the UK. Uh, if you are in a place where there's no reasonable expectation of privacy, you can film anything. The street is the ultimate uh, example of that. Uh, and we talk about this in our team here. Never turn off your camera. Just never do. And if some you know, ill-informed or malicious cop says turn off your camera, uh, the answer is get a court order for that, sir. Um, there are a few instances where there is a reasonable expectation of privacy. The obvious example would be in a bathroom or a, a changing room. Uh, then there is a reasonable expectation of privacy and you ought not to film either explicitly or sneakily. <laughs> but there's no rule against filming a cop on the street, sneaky or not. And by the way, why would he have an objection to being filmed if he's doing something above board? What an awful, awful cop he was, ticketing kids, you know, and I was thinking, what's going on? I thought, they, well then, okay, it's the Orthodox Jews. Cops in New York really picked on the Orthodox Jews. Cops in Montreal despise the Orthodox Jews. In fact, we have a, a Jewish reporter in Montreal named Yankee Pollock, and the cops call him Jew media. Hey, media Jewif, you're Jew media. <laughs> what? You're just not even hiding that, are you? And I was saying, what are they going after kids for? Oh, because they're, they're dressed as Orthodox Jews. That's why. That's why. That, that makes sense. What a disgrace the police are. Yeah, I'm not saying every single damn cop is a disgrace, but boy, um, the bad ones have certainly, certainly risen to the top. This has been their moment, hasn't it been? Um, let's take a look, see what we got here. We were Fry Rumble, then we went on the 10-minute Sexy David. 
and I don't know why I went to that Roxanne movie, and I misremembered it. I, I've, there's another one with Gerald, Gerard Depardieu. There's two, there's, there's so many movies in that vein. That was a great movie. Have you ever seen that one before? You know, I really, it's a, it's a feel-good movie. It's an 80s movie, 90s movie. Daryl Hannah was lovely, and Steve Martin's really funny, and it's a wonderful story about a guy with a super big nose. You know, you really should, and that's, you want to find something that the missus, you can watch with the missus. Don't watch movie 43 with the missus. I made the mistake of starting that with the missus, and I just tried to fast forward. She said, no, you can't do that. And I just said, we can't watch this anymore. So you can't watch movie 43 with your wife. Can we just get 30 seconds of movie 43, the Superman scene? Because that's the highlight, absolute highlight of the movie. The leprechaun scene is amazing as well. So just, I, I, I like to give movie advice. Would you, would you say my movie advice is so-so or generally right or generally terrible? Generally right, thank you. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm always right. So, so a few weeks ago, I was just sitting at home and I was clicking, and I came upon something called Movie 43. Is it 43? Movie 43? I thought, what's that? Like that movie literally tells you nothing. And the, whatever the thumbnail was, like I didn't watch a trailer. I didn't do any. I, did, I just clicked it. So I had no idea what I was in for, and it was like a series of shorts with famous actors. Each one trying to out offend you, like the if. You, oh yeah, the Batman one. Yeah, the Batman. And I'm just going to play a little bit of this. I think there's probably some swearing in here. I know there's some sexual innu innuendo. Let's just see how much we can play before I feel like I'm cringing. This is from a movie called Movie 43. Hey, Soups. What's up, brother? It's the Dark Knight. You can hear him. Can yeah, you? I can hear him. I can also see Batman underneath the table. Because of the x-ray vision, of course. No, I can just see him. It's a cafe table. I mean, it's, it's really obvious. Pumas. There's our culprit. It's the penguin. Excuse me. I'm gonna go do some Batmaning. Do you need me? Can I help? <laughs> Bush that size is only good for one thing. And that one thing is hiding a wang. You know what I'm saying? Wait. Oh. I guess I woke up this morning with a little case of the fuck arounds. <laughs> you know, I'm just having fun with my buddy. <laughs> Woo! All right, you, you, you know, there's a little swearing there. Um, thankfully, I remember now there is a moment there that is definitely not safe for TV. That movie is a guy movie. If you are a woman, you will not like it. It's a very funny movie for guys. Now, if you're a, a gal, may I recommend, especially a gal with a husband or a boyfriend, may I recommend sitting down with some pumpkin latte, pumpkin spice latte, um, some banana bread, what are some other girl things? Beads, what else do girls like? Beads, um, candles, throw pillows, little pillows, lots of little pillows. And uh, is there anything else that girls like? Uh, skin cream, hand cream. You know, whatever, like potions and lotions, and soaps, and bath bombs, and the movie Roxanne. And as long as your guy has a phone that he can surf while you, he sits next to you surfing the phone while you watch Roxanne, that's a great night. That's a great night. David Shirt is live! Oh, that's great. Let's go. Whoa. Okay, there it is. There it is. Click on it. What are the different varieties? Oh, different colors. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that chest. The chestal area. The chestal region. Now, are there women's cuts? Are there women's? No, it's just, just, just a t-shirt? All right. Because, uh, yeah, you're going to get guys wanting that. You're going to get non-binary guys. You're going to get bicurious guys. You're going to get... Uh, personal friends, but I think this is going to be a very, very big seller with women folk, um, especially uh, MILFs and GILFs, as they're called. I don't know what that means. I don't know what those words mean. No one will tell me. Uh, and I keep asking, and, and people say, Ezra, you're too young to know what those mean. I say, all right, maybe one day people will tell me what that means, uh, and they'll tell me if that's safe to say on TV. Uh, so one day, some, like, can someone please, so if you're a MILF or a GILF, you're going to love that, David. Put it up one more time. Put it up one more time for the special grandma in your life. Can we zoom in a little bit? 
Not too much. <laughs> Look at that. Free shipping. Well, I'll take two. You know what? I would get the black one. What are the other colors? Red. Yellow. Yeah. Blue. Yeah, I like the blue. What's the white one look like again? No, I'd go for the black one or the blue one. That's great. I, there are a lot of people that are getting this for Christmas from Ezra Isaac Levant. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, a lot of widows. A lot of, uh, what's the word cougar mean? No one ever tells me what these words mean. What does that word, what does that word cougar mean? What does it mean? No, you guys are laughing at me because I don't know what these words mean. Anyways, I'm told that milfs and gilfs and cougars like that. I, okay, let me go. I have to Google those words because you guys are laughing at me and that suggests maybe I'm using a word I shouldn't be. Is that right? Maybe a viewer, maybe a viewer can correct me. Am I, am I using those words wrong? Anyways, there's a tremendous gender, like different one of our talent has different uh, appeal. Um, according to our YouTube stats, we're what, about 85% male, our channel in general, about that. But when David Menzies come on, waka waka, you know, it's like, uh, whoa, that's like 70, 80% women. Am I right? Higher, higher. It's like, ladies night, what a night. Hey ladies, it's ladies night. No? It's like what, 80%? Oh, are you, have you come to tell me what MILF and GILF and Cougar mean? Are they good things? Like, like I know WTF is why the face, right? This is what the kids tell me. Like my daughter's WTF, WTF. I said, what's that? Dad, it means why the face. Oh, right. So I'm really, I'm really into the lingo. Anyways, for all the, for all the, Ladies, young ladies and young at heart. There's that David Manzi. Put, put up one more time. Now, I don't know how you sleep. Do you wear the PJs, the full PJs, the, the PJ top, PJ bottom, and the sleeping hat? Do you have a sleeping hat? Anyone else have a sleeping hat? Because this is the kind of thing I can imagine. A young at heart. I can imagine like Golden Girls. Who was the frisky one? Blanche. Wearing this to sleep in and nothing else, and nothing else. Think about it. Nothing comes between me and Menzies. Like you say something like that. So you blanch, you put this on, nothing comes between me and my Menzies. We should have a David Menzies, we should have this on a pillow. Why aren't we selling this on a pillow? You know what I mean? I'm not talking one of those weird body pillows like those. I'm not talking about anything weird. Not that, that would be weird. I'm talking about something really normal, like really normal, like that you would sleep on. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, when you're watching Roxanne, just have a few of those pillows around. Maybe a blanket. Maybe PJs with the feeties. You know, I'm just brainstorming. I like to look after our female fans. And we have occasional surveys. And what do women want? More Menzies. A whole lot more Menzies. Let me tell you one thing, ladies. We've been bouncing around a show called Menzies After Dark. It's a paywall show. You pay by the minute, actually. I don't know if you heard about these things, like one in one nine hundred kind of thing. So, um, it's, not for the, it's not for kids. Okay, um, Annalisa, yay, ordered my Menzies shirt. Annalisa, let me speak directly to you and everyone else just take a break for a second. Annalisa, would you buy a pillow with that Menzies picture on it? Real talk, real talk, would you? Let me know.
because we could have a whole Menzies After Dark line. And uh, uh, Odyssey, a cougar stole a woman chasing a young man. Oh, okay. Rumble, share 20, those tombs are not woke. They're probably filming the reporting. Telling I'm just, there's so many comments here. It's just wonderful. Um, Agatha says, love all the new reporters. Thank you for that. And I'm sorry you had to listen to uh, the last five minutes as well. We've had a few sort of Bermuda Triangles in the show tonight that it probably would be best if they disappeared. Now, I don't think that's possible, especially in an Odyssey. You can't, it's on the blockchain. It's on the blockchain. Those things you cannot delete. That's, that's half the fun of them. Once you say it, you can't unsay it. Once you see that shirt, you can't unsee that shirt. And when you went to the back and, and David was in the gym, and you saw something, you will never, you live to be 120, you will not unsee that. <laughs> Listen, we're all having fun. We love David, he's a good sport. This is all in good jest. He is the Rebbe Award winner, and, um, and he actually is the most diligent in the gym. And he, he can lift. He can lift. And I mean, you know the story of when I was out there at 3 a.m. at one of these Antifa camps in Occupy Toronto. It was 3 a.m. and we had the infrared camera. Can we still get that? Can, is that video up there? Google, YouTube, I mean, search Ezra Levant Occupy Toronto tent. Do you know that story? This was back at Sun News Days. There was an Occupy Toronto um, little tent city, and I had a suspicion that they actually didn't have anyone in those tents at night. So we went out at 3 a.m. with, um, let's see if I can find it here. It's hard to find. Oh, there it is. I, I found it here. I'm going to send you a link. It's at about four minutes in. So there was like 30 tents in this square in Toronto. And I thought, there's no one in those tents because it's cold out. This is just a media Potemkin village. It's a lie. It's a pack of lies. There's only one tent that's in. Everyone else stays in hotels. This is a sham. All the media are falling for it. I said, I know how I can prove it. Um, we can get a, an infrared camera that can detect heat at night, as in a body in there. So it's about four minutes in there. And so I went out at 3, 3.30 a.m. downtown. Um, Matt was our cameraman. Uh, I was there, and David was there with me. I can't remember who was doing what. Now, this is going to be uh, me talking with Jonathan Kay about it, so it's, but it's the quickest thing I could find. Can you start playing from around four minutes? Here, take a look. Activists, mm. when it comes to the issues that you've got. Well, you're right. And, you know, I, I am never shy about saying that. I don't think okay, I've ever called myself a reporter. Turn off the audio there, because the audio is me chatting. But you see what's happening there? I'm going from tent to tent, saying, is anyone there? Is anyone there? We were looking in these tents. Hello, is anyone there? There was no one in any of the tents. And the reason I felt comfortable opening up a tent, thanks, is because I knew from the infrared camera every single one of them was empty except for one tent that was blazing with light because everyone was smoking pot back then. So one of the Antifa came out of that tent, and I don't know if you can find this in a hurry, I just found that in one second there. But this guy runs out of the tent and comes up to me and he, it's like we're in elementary school, he grabs the glasses off my face and runs into the dark. Now my vision's bad enough with my glasses on it's 3 a.m., so it's dark out. He grabs my glasses and runs into the dark. I have no chance. I, can't, I can barely see anyways. David, in the spur of the moment, runs after him. Instinctively, like it was a reflex. It didn't take him a minute. He didn't think about it. It was a reflex. Runs into the dark of night. And then a few minutes later, he comes back and he says, here you go. How did you do that? How did you chase him down? How did you get them back without them being broken? 
what did you say or do to this Antifa thug to get my glasses back for me at 3 something a.m. at night? Well, that's David. He's loyal and he's, uh, his instincts are all good. And in that moment, I learned a whole side about David that I didn't know. I mean, we know David as a fun guy who's always making nice jokes, who's you know, hail fit. He comes in, hey, you know, he's like that. And he works very hard and he's very fair and he's a good reporter. But at 3 a.m. that night, I saw a different side of David. I saw a side that I would call loyalty, strength, instincts, courage, physical strength. Like, you know, he's actually a pretty big guy. And he works out almost all the time here. So I saw a whole different side of David that day. And I'd say that's the day we became friends. So that's my David. And so you'll forgive me for all my jokes about him. Um, but uh, Annalisa, do let me know if you would be interested in a David Menzies pillow. Because, uh, oh, she said that? She wrote it, she, that she would for sure. Damn straight I would, she says. Wow. You know, there's no understanding love. Love, the, the heart finds a way. The heart wants what it wants. It's one o'clock, mercifully. What a pleasure to be with you today. Oh, there's still some people watching. How did that happen? You know, and thank you to the person who taught me what the word cougar means. And, um, but those throw pillows aren't just for um, middle-aged and up women. They are for anyone who likes comfort. In fact, um, everyone has a pillow. I'm going to close before we do more damage to our Rebel News brand. Um, Hyper Chat, Wendy Walk. The sores on your knuckles from dragging are showing, Ezra. Careful, you might offend someone. Laugh out loud. I was just kidding. I was just kidding. That whole thing was a joke. It was an attempt at humor. Um, I do know that WTF stands for Why the Face. And uh, so, so if you need help to understand the urban memes <laughs> or what the kids are saying, just ask me. Because how else are you going to understand all these new rap music songs and all these ironic shows and YouTube videos? I'm here to help interpret. All right, it's 102. Goodbye, everybody. Do we have a cat video, dog video? To, to, oh, dog video, oh my God, cat video, never. Here's a dog video.